are listening to the Chomp Cast, the official podcast of Sword Chomp. And remember, you can always go to swordchomp.com where you can access the many places our podcast is available for download. But if you're listening to the show right now, that means you found us. So welcome to the madness that is the Chomp Cast. You can also find us on Patreon, patreon.com slash swordchomp. If you enjoy the show and you'd like to support us, look for that VIP tier. More on that later. But, you know, whether it's the sort of alternate Nazi history game out there like The Memory of Us or like Wolfenstein or something like Far Cry that is inspired by real-life cults and modern America, video games oftentimes use dark realities, our dark realities, as inspiration. So we thought it'd be a pretty fun topic of the show if we talked about, you know, is story more affecting if it parallels real-world scenarios? And we're going to get some help from the Instagram community there as well uh, and dig deep on that topic of the show. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and Josh just messaged me, and now he shakes his head. And sh- I have to have it on for a reason, Josh. You'll see in a second. All okay. right. Okay. That's part I'm of the show. Sure. Um, All right. We have, uh, we have some inspired polls to run through today as well. Um, every Tuesday, you vote at the Sword Chomp Instagram, and we discuss it on the podcast. Uh, poll topics this week include Assassin's Creed Odyssey. A couple topics there. Um, the new Joker being played by Joaquin Phoenix. And the art for Death Stranding was dropped by Kojima this week, among other things. And we, I have two. Uh, I want to take some time to highlight two very special interviews that we did this pack, past week or so. Um, me and Shay on our side podcast, our sister podcast, uh, because they were really, really interesting and and really cool. For I want our listeners to be aware of those and how they can find them. Uh, so all that and more on this week's. Chomp cast, but let's get to some intros, um, guys. This is pretty exciting. Um, <laughs> so this is a weird week because Fish isn't here, right? You know, um, it's a strange week. Our comrade Fish is traveling to Montana for my wedding. Uh, the Filipino Johnny Depp is missing in action. But the good news is, Fish has been secretly working on a new revolutionary alter ego AI. God damn it! Who's messaging me? Sorry, that's Shay. Shay. Stop messaging me, Shay. I need this for the bit. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do it just to fuck with me now. One. No, he wouldn't do that. <laughs> Shay? That was... Shay fucking with you? I, I don't do that. I'm I'm a very nice, cordial, professional individual. <sighs> this is why it's dangerous. I your cannot phone on. believe you. I can Slandering believe. Shay's good name like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't believe that. Mm. Very rude. Sorry, I was over the line. It was over the line. All right. I can't believe you you'd insinuate that. You are a habitual line stepper. Yeah. As it were. <laughs> That's true. I would say I am a habitual line closer. Kloss- cl- God damn it. Now you got me all flustered. Huh. I would say I'm a I habitual. I thought you just said you were a habitual <laughs> loincloth. <laughs> I would I would say I'm a habitual line crosser. Um, okay. that, that's a lot of that, that whole L enunciation there got me habitual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, so good news though, guys. Fish has been secretly working on a new revolutionary alter ego AI. He's been working on it for weeks now. Weeks. He started working on it after he watched the movie Her a couple weeks ago, and he's been feverishly just. Cranking away at it in his basement. <laughs> uh, see, see what I did there? Um, but it, it's pretty interesting. So he wanted to make this so that when he missed the podcast, we could ask his alter ego questions or could chime in. And stuff. Now, it's not perfect, okay? Um, it's got some kinks. And you know, like the, when you were first getting a new software out there, it's like prototype, alpha, it's still got some kinks to work out. So if, if it's a little off or a little weird at times, it's just because of that. It's just it's a prototype, okay? So bear with me. Um, but, uh, anyways, Fish, I know you couldn't be here this week, so I guess I'll ask your AI this. Um, how are you doing this week, Fish? Uh, how are you? It's me, a Mario, pump, pumping my dick into Princess Peach. Oh, okay, alright, well, it wasn't exactly the hello I was expecting, but, um, you know, he's Mario, it's, 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 like I said, there's some kinks we still Mm. gotta work out, so. Huh. <sighs> Nothing, huh? huh? I don't even know what to think right now. 
Let's <laughs> let's let, let's try this again. I mean, fish, are you? We get some of those kinks out. I don't even know what that was. What is that? What is that supposed to be? Is that Elmer Fudd? Is that what that is? I don't even know what. Uh, in- <laughs> I don't know what that is. I think maybe a third line of code might help you out there, Fish. Maybe. I don't know. I I agree. I feel like Fish did ayahuasca before even beginning this trip <laughs> to make anything. <laughs> For real. He's like, uh-huh. I, I see my purpose in life. And then he immediately went to his phone and started recording this. Hmm. All right. Uh, last, last try, Fish. Uh, let's see if we can get a good response out of you. Misa, donkey, a punch of my guasa. She's a like Oh, all right. Well, we'll 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 want we'll to come back to the, oh to fish God. in a little bit. He still he still got some work, uh, but we know I'll take I'll take a glitchy fish over no fish at all. You know what I mean? So hmm. that's my personal uh, attitude on that. Um, also, I do have fish's full approval for all of these, so I just think it's important to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, they're only going to get worse from here. No, they have been uh, carefully. You know, AI is interesting. It's a fascinating technology. But thanks for being here, fish. Sort of, uh, in a weird way. So we'll we'll look forward to talking about later 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 on in the show. Uh, it's true, it's true. Artificial ignoramus is always a difficult oh, thing to work with. Oh, artificial. I see what you did there. Oh, come on, don't say that about him. Come on. Um, I wasn't talking about him. I was talking about what he created. Oh, that's that's true. It's true. I mean, it was Jar Jar Binks impression. And that guy, let's be honest, he is an ignoramus. <laughs> Does anybody think it's startling that Fish does an incredibly good Jar Jar Binks? It's like a it's like an incredible and in, absolutely incredible. Uh mm. He's got a weird repertoire of of impressions Fish does. Jar Jar Binks, Elmer Fudd apparently like they're going to probably get weirder. I just <laughs> that's like his well, bank, you know. But, I'm just I'm just waiting for him to do uh, the impression of a juggalo. Oh, no. No, that's never... Cross the line. Cross the line! Um, yeah, it's, it's always tough because I know... It was where we started on time tonight because Fish is normally... You know, I would say he's fashionably late, like... But he's usually probably just taking a shit. That's what he does, right? Like, I... Usually before we, go to, we start the podcast, we'll... We'll kind of, you know, if we ate or whatever, we like to get everything out. And I, I always eat like some spicy Chinese food, so it's pretty painful for me. But uh, oh, that's a shame, man. My shits are fucking badass. Oh, huh. the streamline, they come straight out. They fuck it. I don't even, you know, I feel it coming out, and I'm like, oh, that doesn't feel like much. I look down, it's a fucking big old goddamn pile of shit, and hmm. it's a healthy looking one too. I look at that thing, and I'm just like. God damn, I'm a fucking beast. All right, all right, you got me. I'm jealous. I, I need you got a good diet. You got a good diet, so I'm jealous of that. Um, a man, another man with a great diet. Uh, the professor Shay Layton is here, joining us from Japan. A couple things I want to highlight this week. Uh, that's me. I was supposed to do a drum roll, but it sounded like a phone ringing. Sorry about that. Huh. Um. Huh. Huh. Um, <laughs> Every day, we stray further from God. Oh, I well, like I, I like any anything remotely I had to say that was funny just went out the window. I'm just I'm perplexed. I'm confused. <laughs> I I hope I hope that that's the continuity. I imagine that people that listen to our podcast are just as equally um, confused i i like to think that maybe they're laughing but then they feel really horrible and disgusted at the same time but yeah Shay, i feel uh, like i feel like <laughs> one one or two of our patreon people are going to be like you know what i didn't sign up for poop jokes oh yes they did that's that's for damn sure um sorry i'm sorry about all the dinging it's just going to be part of the the deal today but you no just, shay's you do realize <laughs> phones can make noise without having the ringer on right I, I don't this... want to lose the thing I'm open on. I'm going to lose it. By 
moving the slider. Just just let him have it. Let him have it. Let him okay. have it. No, no, <laughs> I mean, this it. is... Wait, hold on. No, hold I on. get it. I get hold it. On. I, I totally hold understand. On. I may this have fixed is, it. I think I fixed this it. This is like every it. old person who has ever gotten a phone call in the middle of a movie <laughs> and walked <laughs> all the way out of the room with it still ringing. I, I fixed yeah. it. I fixed it. Okay, mm. so I was just paranoid. I didn't want to fuck with it, but I, I turned off the <laughs> ringer. So I think we're fine. Now. I think we're fine. Uh, of course, and this would be the one time of day that I'm getting all these random messages from my fiance. Uh, but yeah, Shay, you did a pretty exciting... I wanted to highlight some of the interviews we did briefly in our intros um, because I want to make sure they get the right publicity, but they're also really interesting. You did a pretty exciting interview on your side podcast, Evoking the Sublime, with the mm-hmm. legendary Greg Kasavin. Um, I was wondering, like, yeah. sort of how you felt about that. Like, any big takeaways you could tease the listeners with if they go to check it out? Yeah, I... It's funny because I did that, at, and I think I've, I talked about it last week too. I did it at like 3 a.m. So I was super loopy. So my first takeaway was don't do interviews at 3 o'clock a.m. because <laughs> then you're going to sound like you are on some type of drug. So that, that was an interesting experience. Positive. Like trying to remember the thing I just said if that was the correct thing I just said. <laughs> That's scary. Every man. single time something came out of my mouth. So that was that was a weird experience for sure. Mm-hmm. I but no, it was it was a dream come true for me, to be honest with you, because uh Bastion is a game. Um that's the game we talked about that, you know, ever since I played it seven years ago, it's a game I just it's constantly been on my mind. Um mm-hmm. every year I think about that game and I, I want to play it again. And I think about the music and I put on the soundtrack. So it was, it was really nice to kind of delve deeper into the, the inner workings of how that game came to be, like how it came to fruition. And Greg was super nice guy. He was very, very easy to talk to. He was a ton of fun. And for me, it kind of elevated my game as an in, uh, interviewer. So it just, it was a really fun interview. It, it, kind of gives you an insight and a window into what goes into developing a video game or writing a video game. Yeah, because he was the writer on Bastion, right? Well, he was a writer on Bastion, Transistor, and Pyre. Uh, so he, he, was, he was the main writer of all three of them. And I think the biggest, you know, the biggest thing that I took away from that interview out of everything is um, they, they've been a studio... <clears throat> for a good nine years now and they've managed to keep the same core people over that period of time and that's Mm -hmm. that's huge because you look at studios that close left and right i mean you look at telltale you know Mm -hmm. just six years ago they they put themselves on the map by releasing the walking dead i mean they were a bigger i mean they they were a studio before that but they really put themselves on the map with the release of that game and in six short years, they have since closed down. And that's just one of many, many examples of how quick this industry changes and how easily it can leave people behind. So the fact that they've stayed together for nine years, through thick and thin, the same core of people, they want to still make games together, they still want to make games at all, is super impressive. And uh, he went yeah, into detail yeah. about that. And it just, for me, it was really eye-opening that, like, you know, in life that we, if we, if we have enough drive and determination, we, we can still pursue our dreams and to do the things we want to do at the end of the day. So it, and he, he details that. So it was super interesting for me to learn uh, exactly kind of what it, what it takes or what it took for them to continue down that path. So it was a lot of fun. It was, it was, it was great to you know, actually talk with someone who worked on Bastion. It just, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And just like Greg's mind is interesting.